What is going on guys, Rongo Vince Mango 12 here and yes I am back after like 4 days. Now you guys probably wondering where have I been and why is like so little videos being uploaded? Well I actually just began my second year of university last week and right now I'm kind of getting used to the schedule like on Tuesdays and Thursdays I am in university all day until 6pm. 6 at night, that is crazy. So I don't actually get home until about half 7 at night and then by then I'm like a little bit too tired because I've been sat in a lecture for 9 hours. But yeah, so for right now I'm just trying to fit everything in with my university schedule, like my YouTube as well and everything. So yeah, I hope you guys understand but we will be getting back to those everyday uploads and stuff like that very soon. But until then, we might as well jump into this issue. So without further ado guys, in the previous issue we saw Peter come home from the X-Men to Aunt May waiting for him and she's going to go ballistic in this issue and this issue is literally just going to revolve around Aunt May and what she's going through so let's jump into it. So I don't know about you guys but this issue really made me feel like I was kind of neglecting Aunt May like the entire Ultimate Spider-Man series has been about Peter Parker and Mary Jane so far and you've never really given a second thought about what Aunt May is going through and it turns out that she's actually seeing a therapist and you can see that she's talking to the therapist about how she had a go at Peter. And this is where we see what actually happened when she confronted Peter about being home so late. And as you can see, she's been really, really aggressive with him. You can see the expression on Peter's face is just in disbelief with what's happening. And she actually grabs his backpack. And you've got to remember that his Spider-Man costume is in the backpack. And something drops out of it. And they both look at the floor with their eyes wide open. And this obviously puts the point across that maybe his Spider-Man mask has fallen out of there. But it turns out that it's just a book, and I thought that that was executed brilliantly, especially because, I don't know if you noticed, but there was a little piece of red fabric hanging out of Peter's backpack back there, so that really insinuated that the Spider-Man costume did fall out, but it was just a book that Peter's mother used to have, and Peter used the excuse that he was in the food court all day reading that book, and that's pretty much what I said in the last issue when I said that I think maybe Peter's going to use the excuse of being at the library. I couldn't quite remember, but I was pretty close. Now surprisingly, Aunt May kind of reminds me of, you know that over-caring grandma? You know like when you go to your grandma's house or something and she has to feed you, like all the time? Aunt May kind of reminds me of that because she believed Peter was dead just because he wasn't at school. Now obviously he'd been missing all day, but the odds that he was going to be dead, there was very little chance. So that's a suggestion of just how much Aunt May cares about Peter. And she kind of gives an explanation as to why she's so overreactive like this and she blames it on Spider-Man. Now obviously she doesn't directly blame on Spider-Man, but it's got something to do with him. Now we have a little bit of a flashback from, I think it was maybe two issues ago, when Peter took out those criminals on rollerblades. It turns out that Aunt May was actually right there next to this fight, and it made her realise what kind of world she lives in. Where there's all these superhero freaks running around, crime happening all over the place, and for some reason, Spider-Man is always there in every aspect of her life. And what I mean by that is that recently there's been rumours that Spider-Man is living in the same neighbourhood as Aunt May. There's been rumours that it could be one of her neighbours. You also can't forget that when Goblin attacked Peter's school, Spider-Man was there again. And she even puts two and two together and says that a mystery person got to Uncle Ben's killer first. And she's even saying that what if that was Spider-Man as well? And of course, we know that it was. And what's actually really interesting about what she's saying here is that she says she doesn't want anything to do with Spider-Man in her life. And obviously that's because she's worried about Peter's safety and whether he's going to be involved in this. But what she doesn't realise is that it's Peter running around as Spider-Man and she's even living in the same house as him. So basically it's almost like being afraid of yourself, like being afraid of your own shadow. Now something that I believe is extremely inevitable when going to see a therapist or when going through something is that you begin to blame yourself. She blames herself for going to a therapist, not because her husband died, but as soon as Captain George Stacy dies, who she's known for a matter of days or weeks, that's when she feels the need to go to a therapist. And she even starts blaming herself for how she's taken advantage of Gwen. And what she means is, is that if you think about it, Aunt May's pretty lonely. Peter's growing up, he's out of the house quite a lot. So Aunt May's just left at the house by herself and she's using Gwen. That's why she brought her into the house so that she always had company. And what you've got to remember is that Aunt May only knows how to cook for three people. Peter, herself and Uncle Ben. So to have three people in the house again is kind of comforting for her and she feels that she's taking advantage of Gwen, not realising that she's actually doing Gwen a huge, huge favour by giving her some place to live, caring for her, etc. And overall, Aunt May is just an awesome character, but she just doesn't realise it. And what we also discover is that she even knows that Peter sneaks out of his room to go and see Mary Jane, but she just doesn't say anything. 
because she doesn't want to take that moment of happiness away from Peter because he's had such an eventful life, he's so young, yet he's been through so much, more than what some people have been through in a lifetime. And Aunt May truly believes that if Peter gets too close to her, he'll die too. And that's actually quite dark, to think that if someone gets too close to you, then they're gonna die because of you. So as you can see so far, this comic is a refreshing take on the Ultimate Spider-Man series, because not only is it focusing on Aunt May, but Aunt May is a character that you don't really think about too often. Now there's this thing with the Ultimate Spider-Man comics, how it's said that Brian Michael Bendis likes to develop his characters before killing them off, or he just likes to develop them in general. For example, Uncle Ben didn't die until the fourth issue, whereas in the original Spider-Man comics, Peter got bit by the spider, Uncle Ben died, and then he became Spider-Man all within the first issue. So my favourite thing about this issue is that you get a huge development over Aunt May's character, you get an emotional intake into what she's going through and how she feels, but also she says things to Peter knowing that she's being a bad person, like when she's arguing with him she knows that it's not his fault and she blames herself, but we don't know that but we know it now and as you can see she's trying to make it over to Peter by spending time with him by going to the movies and that is where the issue ends and it was awesome. So what did you guys think? Let me know in the comments section below. I've just give you a little bit of an overview of what I thought of the comic. It was awesome to see Aunt May developing her emotions, especially through a therapist as well. That's like quite a deep thing to be going into. But yeah, so I'm going to give this issue a 9 out of 10. Obviously, that's a little bit of a high score to say that Spider-Man's not even in it, and it's just solely based around Aunt May. But the whole point of Brian Michael Bendis developing Aunt May's character, fleshing out all of the emotional stuff, and helping us understand what Aunt May is actually going through, also gives the suggestion that other characters also have the same predicaments as Peter. Like, even though we're only seeing Peter's struggles going through life, all the other characters have the same situations happening to them, and it's interesting to see from a different perspective as well. Now, that is it for the end of this video, and of course, as I said at the beginning of the video, I'm going to try and be more frequent with my uploads because I'm getting used to university and stuff like that, so I will try and upload a little bit more. But in the meantime, you can go to the links in the description to follow me on Twitter and Facebook. There you can see all the recent comic book news and updates. I've actually just previewed issue 2 of the new Amazing Spider-Man series, which is part of the all-new, all-different Marvel Universe, which releases later in October. So you can click the link in the description to go to my Facebook page to see that now. And as for videos and when they're being uploaded, etc., I usually post on my Facebook or my Twitter whether I'm having problems, why there's not been a video today, or anything along those lines. So make sure you follow me on there as well. And if you want to know what I'm doing in my free time when I'm not editing these videos, then go ahead and follow me on Instagram as well if you want to do that. Now, guys, for more videos, for more reviews, hit the like button on this video, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you all later. In the city.